Okay, in this video, we are going to solve literal equations. I'm going to add, we're going to solve difficult literal equations. These are not, um, this is not an introductory lesson. This is after you already have a solid foundation in this topic. Um, we're going to start with this problem. This problem um, says solve for h. Now, notice it's a literal equation because we have multiple variables. We have r and h here. Um, we also have the pi symbol. We have an s. So it's, it's a literal equation because there's multiple variables. And we're going to solve for h. And all that really means to solve for it, it doesn't mean we're going to find like a numerical answer, but it means that we're just going to isolate h. That's what we're going to do here. So if I take this equation, we're trying to isolate the h right there. I can start off by getting rid of this entire term just by subtracting 2 pi r squared from each side. Let me kind of copy it down so I have some more room to work. s equals 2 pi r h plus... 2 pi r squared. So I'm going to start by subtracting that entire term. Because I have to look at the operation that's happening between the stuff that we're trying to get rid of and the variable that we're trying to isolate. The operation happening between those is addition, therefore our inverse operation is going to be subtraction. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And now we're left with s minus 2 pi r squared on the left side equals 2 pi r h on the right side. Once again, we're trying to isolate the h, so I have to look at the operation that's taking place between this h and all this other stuff. And I know if those variables are touching like that, that means that there's multiplication going on. Therefore, our inverse operation is going to be to divide. And anything I do to one side, I do to the other. So we've now isolated our h. We have s minus 2 pi r squared over 2 pi r. There are some slightly different ways you might represent this answer, but I would be satisfied if you were in my class. Um, that answer would be satisfactory. All right, let's go to another one. Let's, let's turn up the heat a little bit. Now, we are going to solve for x, but notice, here's what's tricky about these. We have x's on both sides of the equation, so let's start by doing a little simplification. I got 5x minus 5a um, equals ax plus b. Now, in a situation like this, in order to solve for x, I can't just get this x by itself. I can't just get this x by itself. There can only be one x in the equation, and it's isolated on one side of the equation. So what we do here is this. I'm going to get all my x's over to the same side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 5x from each side. So I have ax plus b minus 5x equals negative 5a. Now I want to get rid of the terms that don't have an x. And in other words, this b right here, I'm going to subtract it from each side of my equation, kind of kick it out to the other side of the equation. So I now have ax minus 5x equals negative 5a minus b. Now here is the tricky part. I've brought an x, all my x's over to this one side of the equation. What I can do now is I can factor out, or in other words, undistribute that x. Notice, normally we, we see a problem like this and we simplify it to this step. We take that x and we distribute it in and multiply it by both those values. But if I have the two terms that have an x in it, I can factor that x out to the front. What this enables us to do is we can now get rid of this a minus 5 value. If x is touching the parentheses, that means we're seeing multiplication. Therefore, our inverse operation is going to be division on each side. And so we're left with x equals negative 5a minus b over a minus 5. We were able to isolate the x. If I were to put this in steps, remember what we're doing, so we're going to do something similar in the next problems. Get the x's over to one side of the equation, as we did by rearranging the equation, then factor the x out of those terms, and then divide to isolate the x. Okay, here we go. Now uh, our simplification is going to look a little bit different here, but I think we're going to have pretty much a similar situation. I'm going to start by distributing. Um, we're going to have 2xw plus 8x, and I'm going to finish out my distribution, minus w minus 4, and that's all equal to... 3x. Now, I see these are my terms that have an x in them. Let's get them all over to the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 8x first, and that leaves us with negative 5x equals 
2xw minus 1w minus 4. And then let's um, move this term over to the left side of the equation by subtracting 2xw. Keep in mind, those are not like terms. I can't combine them yet because that has the w on it. So I have negative 5x minus 2xw equals negative 1w minus 4. Now we're to where we were at the last problem. I've got an x in both my terms. I'm going to factor that x out to the front. It's like I'm undistributing that x. And then I have negative 5 minus 2w left. You can always check to see if you did that right by distributing this x back in and seeing if you would end up with what you started with. We're ready for our last step. I'm going to divide by negative 5 minus 2w on each side. And we have our answer. I'm going to kind of copy it over here to the left. x equals negative 1w minus 4 over negative 5 minus 2w. What I might do, just because there's a lot of negatives there for simplification, is I might factor a negative out of the numerator and I might factor a negative out of the denominator, which is basically like undistributing a negative one, and then that negative over a negative would be a positive. I, I don't know what the official rule is on that. probably differs from teacher to teacher, but I'd rather have all positives than, than dealing with all those negatives. Okay, one more. As I'm looking at this problem, I can see that I've got one x here. I've got my 2x there. Our ultimate goal is going to be to get those onto the same side of the equation. But this, this fraction is kind of throwing us off, so I'm just thinking out loud. Let's, let's get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 2a on each side of my equation. Anything I do to one side, I'll do to the other. And now I have x minus 1 equals 4xa minus 2a squared. Um, and now I've got two terms with x, so let's rearrange. I'm going to subtract 4xa from each side of my equation. And I now have x minus 1 minus 4xa equals negative 2a squared. Get rid of that 1 because we don't care about him right now. Now we're ready to do the step that we've been doing in all these problems. Hopefully you're guessing it. I'm going to take that a or that x and I'm going to factor it out to the front. Keep in mind when you divide an x out of x, you're left with a 1. And now we are here. Your last step would be to divide by 1 minus 4a on each side of this equation. And you are there. x equals negative 2a squared plus 1 over 1 minus 4a. I want to give you several uh, problems that are all kind of similar here so you get a chance to practice. But remember, our idea is to simplify, rearrange it so that the variable you're solving for is all on one side of the equation. Then we factor that variable out and divide by what's left.